All right, good morning, everyone. Just making sure that you guys are hearing me. If you guys are here with me today, joining me in this live show, can you please say hi and hello in the comments section? We are streaming uh, live today for Kinetics College. This is uh, an activity that we do in partnership with Kinetics and Aspire RN. This is happening every Monday. 7 a.m. Central Time, 5 a.m. Pacific Time. We're also streaming live in the Philippines. Um, right now, I think in the Philippines is 9 p.m., right? We are waiting for more people to join the show. My name is Dr. Nurse Paul, and I will be hosting the Kinetics College show today. This show is hosted in partnership with Aspire RN and Kinetics USA, um, a recruitment agency in the USA. And for those who do not know, while we are waiting for many people to join us today, Kinetics USA has partnered with Aspire RN to provide scholarship for NCLEX um, classes. So if you guys are interested to join our NCLEX review classes and get a scholarship opportunity, please visit the link that we will be posting right now. It's here on your screen right now. It's cusa.link slash AspireRN. And this will lead you to a link where you will fill out um, your information and our recruiters from Kinetics USA will contact you to get you pre-qualified. This is a scholarship program in partnership with Kinetics USA and Aspire RN. Aspire RN is an NCLEX prep course company, which I own. I'm the CEO of Aspire RN, and we've had great success in helping Kinetics USA nurses and many nurses around the world pass their NCLEX. We are specializing in foreign graduate nurses in preparing them to pass the NCLEX exam. Thank you guys for those who are online. Hi, Sonny. Hi, Mark. Hi, Lara. Ashgar. Thank you guys for tuning in. They are in Facebook and LinkedIn. We also have Ipioma on YouTube tuning in today. While waiting for many other people, I'm still sharing it on my social media and my team, both Kinetics and Aspire RN, are streaming this live on our Facebook channels, YouTube, LinkedIn, and many other websites. Give me a few seconds. I'm going to turn off my camera for a few minutes so I can set up my computer. I forgot to set the charging um, uh, dock, so my computer might die in the middle of the class. So please continue to invite your friends. Can you please share this to your, um, to your um, page right now and tag your friends so we can bring them in and they can join us today. I'll be talking about pharmacology. And I will be flashing different questions that we will answer together later. I'm going to be rationalizing those questions and see the scores that we are going to get. All right. I'll be right back. Please don't go. Let me just turn off my microphone and I will be uh, right back. Okay.
All right, I'm back. Thank you, guys. Hello, Juvie. Hello, Jean. Hello, Anna Marie. Hello, Che. And thank you, guys, for joining. Tamana. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Cess Maria. Thank you, guys, for joining today. Please continue to share this on social media. We are live on Facebook. For those who are not aware, we are Kinetics College. This is a partnership of Aspire RN and Kinetics USA. Aspire RN is an Elkins Prep company. Kinetics USA is a foreign recruitment agency for the USA, helping nurses to come here to the United States. And we have partnered to create Kinetics College, where we do free live classes every Monday. 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. And every first Monday is Aspire RN, um, who will be hosting the show. And we are doing free NCLEX classes hosted by yourself, doctor, uh, by myself, yours truly. I'm sorry. I'm Dr. Nurse Paul. Please follow me on my social media at Dr. Nurse Paul on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for more information about the free classes that I do um, every Saturday. Thank you guys for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about um, diabetes mellitus pharmacology. This is pharmacology tips part two. The first part I did a couple of months back. If you go to my page, Dr. Nurse Paul or Aspire RN Facebook page or Kinetics USA Facebook page, you will see in the videos that we did I had my first class in pharmacology tips in the past, and this is the continuation. And uh, I like pharmacology. I know a lot of students don't like pharmacology, but this is one of the major parts of the NCLEX. About 12 to 17% of your NCLEX exams about pharmacology. And today I'm going to talk about diabetes mellitus medications, the new medications that we're using, and some of the NCLEX questions that I'm going to be flashing later, you're going to help me answer those questions. Please continue to share this on your page. Thank you guys for joining. If you guys are here today and live with us, can you please comment your location and what time it is right now in your current location? And while waiting for the responses, I'm streaming live from Houston, Texas, and it's 7.08 a.m. here, quite gloomy and a little cold. It's already fall season. And um, I apologize if I sound a little congested. I was um, um, feeling under the weather. I just came back from my Europe trip two days ago. And uh, because of the cold weather in Europe, it's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I get easily um, I got I got colds, coughs and colds and congestion. And I'm still trying to recover. I thought I was going to recover um, fast. But unfortunately, I'm still struggling with congestion. But I'm feeling a lot better. So um, I apologize if you will hear me, hear me a little congested. And I was really trying my best to like um, uh, not cough today. But we will try. Thank you guys for joining. We have Shell from Philippines. It's 9 p.m. in the Philippines as well as Kate. Sonny is in the United Arab Emirates. It's 5 p.m. Maria is in Cebu, Philippines. Reg is in Singapore. I believe that's the same time as in the Philippines. Audrey is in Zimbabwe, 3 p.m. Thank you for joining. Izang is in UAE. And Elsa is also in Singapore. Malilin is in Oman. It's 5 p.m. Diane is in uh, Saudi Arabia, 4 p.m., and she said belated happy birthday, Sir Paul. Thank you. It was my birthday two weeks ago. That's why I went to uh, Europe to celebrate my birthday. And uh, Kinyu is in Uganda. It's 4 p.m. today. Marinel is in Philippines. And Jenny as well. Ernesto is in Davao, Philippines. It's 9 p.m. Jane in Philippines. Thank you guys for joining today. Please keep sharing the uh, link to the show so more people can join us today, all right? Now, if you guys are looking towards fulfilling your American dream and you guys want a scholarship opportunity for NCLEX classes and employment to the United States, please do visit the link that we are about to flash right now on your screen. It's cusa.link slash aspirern. This link will lead you to a form that you will fill out so our recruiters from Kinetics USA and Aspire RN can reach out to you 
and get you started with your American dream. <clears throat> if you qualify with our criteria, sorry about that. If you qualify with our criteria, you will get a scholarship um, program that is sponsored by Kinetics USA and a U.S. employer where you will take the classes with Aspire RN for NCLEX, right? And thank you, Crizel, for um, greeting me a happy birthday. It was really a fun birthday in Europe, and I was really looking forward to doing that. You know, during the pandemic, we really couldn't go anywhere because of the uh, restrictions to travels and quarantines. But I'm happy that we're back to normal. When I traveled to Europe, um, everything was back to normal, just like you're in the United States, and there's no need for quarantine. Anyway, um, I think we're we're about to start. By the way, for those who do not know me, my name is Paul Bilyuen. You can call me Dr. Nurse Paul. That's my social media handle in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And I push out videos every Saturday. I do live videos, live vlog every Saturday, 8 a.m. Central Time. And I do a lot of different shows. I have the USA Nurse series where you can learn a lot of stuff of how to be a nurse here in the United States, the opportunities, the issues and concerns, what you need to know about being a nurse in the United States. And also my highlights of the show, the Dr. Nurse Paul show that I do every Saturday is the secrets of the next generation and clicks. For all we know, next year, April 1, 2023, we will have a new set of questions and scoring system which I've been discussing on my show, the Dr. Nurse Paul Show, both in YouTube and Facebook, um, every Saturday, 8 a.m. And tonight, or today, I'm going to give you a preview of a sample questions that's related to my topic today of the next generation NCLEX. Assuming that you're going to take your exam next year, past April 1, 2023, you might want to know how these next generation NCLEX questions are going to be done or are going to be implemented, right? Without further ado, let's um, discuss diabetes mellitus and have some updates with diabetes mellitus. In the year 2022, the American Diabetes Association updated the diagnostic criteria for us to diagnose diabetes mellitus, all right? The HbA1c or glycosylated hemoglobin should be above 6.5%. Before, our HbA1c should be above 7% back in 2020 to be considered diabetes mellitus. But American Diabetes Association updated it again. Now, everybody with an HbA1c of about 6.5% is diagnosed as diabetes mellitus. Or we can also check the fasting blood glucose, and it should be above 126 milligram. And random blood glucose should be above 200 milligram. In order to di diagnose diabetes mellitus, there should be two tests that will be performed to confirm that. So if you're doing fasting blood glucose, you may want to check HbA1c. If you're doing random blood glucose, you may want to check um, HbA1c again. All right, so two times. And the goal, of course, for diabetes mellitus, which we'll be talking about pharmacology today, is to decrease the blood glucose and decrease the HbA1c, which is the main medical treatment goal, right? The reason for this is to prevent complications of diabetes. Diabetes does not have a cure, but we can control it. It does have a lot of chronic complications, both in the macrovascular and microvascular structures. In the microvascular structures, for example, it can cause nephropathies, it can damage the kidneys, and a lot of our end-stage renal di disease dialysis patients here in the States are actually, um, they have diabetes and it's caused by their diabetes, right? Over time, it can also lead to retinopathy damages to the eye or neuropathies damages to the nerve. So you see patients with diabetes with decreased pain sensation and they get injuries, eventually leading to amputation because of this problem. And then macrovascular complications like congestive heart failure, hypertension, heart attack, and so many other complications because of diabetes. And then there's the acute emergency complications like diabetic ketoacidosis and HHNS or hypersmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome or coma. It can lead to coma. And welcome to those that are joining. If Yoma is coming from Nigeria, 
Osili is saying hi. She's joining us from LinkedIn today. I can see all your comments from all the social media that we're sharing it to. And Asgar is joining from Pakistan. All right. For those who are coming late, don't worry. This class is recorded and you're going to see this later uploaded to the social media uh, channels of Aspire RN, Dr. Nurse Paul, and Kinetics USA. Wevina just came in from the Philippines. Thank you for joining. All right. And um, let's continue. The management for diabetes mellitus is easy to remember. Diabetes mellitus DM. We also use the mnemonic DM for the management. Diet and exercise. Very important. We tell them to do low-carb diet. Low-carb meaning we want to focus if they need carbs for energy. We want to focus on good carbs, all right, or the macro carbs, the carbs that will be um, not increasing the sugar acutely. So those are the complex sugars like vegetables and fruits, right? And we want to tell them to avoid simple sugars like candies, pastries, right? And uh, medical exercise is also equally important. You know, muscles don't need insulin to use the sugar from the blood. So we want to let the muscles keep using those sugar from the blood without the help of insulin. And we already know in diabetes, there's a problem with insulin balance, with insulin control, with insulin resistance. I'm not going to discuss the pathophysiology of diabetes today. I'm going to focus on pharmacology. And of course, the next management will be medical management. While diet and exercise are equally important, Medical management is very important in diabetes. Like I said, there's no cure, but we want to control it as easy or as early as we can to prevent those long-term complications. More people are joining. Joy is from Kenya. Naki is from Bacolod City, Philippines. I love Bacolod, one of my favorite cities that I love in the Philippines. And uh, Chinoni is um, joining us from Nigeria. Thank you guys for joining and uh, let's continue for diabetes. We're going to talk about the pharmacology today. And don't go, don't leave, tune in, because towards the end, I'm going to be flashing different types of NCLEX style questions, and you, wa you want to answer that with me, and we're going to check your scores later, all right? For the pharmacology, for diabetes, we have two major um, um, two major types, all right? I think my slides got a little bit messed up because of the app that we're using, all right? We have the oral and injectables. The orals should be on one column and the injectables should be on the other column. For the orals, we have DM bats. For the injectables, we have AGI. Before, we only have insulin as injectables, but now because of recent development and medical you know, evolution, we have many other medications now that we can use for diabetes. For oral, we have DM bats. Injectables, we have AGI. For the DM bats, we have DPP4 inhibitors, meglitinides, biguanide, otherwise known as uh, metformin. We'll give you examples later. Alpha glucosidase inhibitors, thiazolidinediones or TZDs, sulfonylureas, SGLT2 inhibitors, or sodium glucose cotransporter 2 inhibitors. And for the injectables, we have AGI, amylinomimetic, GLP-1 agonists, and the most popular one, insulin, all right? So hold your horses. I'm going to show you examples. Thank you guys for joining. We have Suzu, who just came in from Nepal, and Victoria is saying hi. Marisol is saying good morning from New York. I think in New York, it's about 8 a.m. right now and we're all over the world today guys thank you for joining and continue sharing this to your friends and classmates um so we can join um we can have them join the class today all right and we're sharing this across our social media but do please follow me on my social media at dr nurse paul because i do live classes every saturday as well 8 a.m central time right and i do classes about secrets of next generation and clicks there and you will see my schedule of live classes there um, on my page so please follow me on my social media thank you gina for joining us today now look at the screen i'm not going to go into details here but there are so many different ways 
how a person gets hyperglycemia. And this is very important for diabetes. We need to understand that in diabetes, the main problem is sugar, but it's almost not always about insulin. It could be because of decreased incretin effect, which can increase the carbohydrate or sugar absorption in the gut. You see the intestine picture there. And then at the bottom of it on the right side, the liver. The liver can also produce sugar through what we call um, glycogenolysis or gluconeogenesis. Or the kidneys can also cause increase in sugar in the blood, hyperglycemia, by preventing the sugars from coming out in the urine. The muscles can also contribute in hyperglycemia by preventing muscle uptake. When we say uptake, the glucose will move to the cells for utilization for energy. So muscles are very good in utilizing glucose. They don't need insulin to do that. But sometimes those glucose molecules cannot enter the muscles and this can contrib contribute to hyperglycemia. Otherwise, there's also brain and pancreatic influences to um, causing hyperglycemia, such as increased pancreatic glucagon secretion or decreased pancreatic insulin secretion. Decreased pancreatic insulin secretion is something we see in patients with type 1 diabetes mellitus. So you don't need to really understand all of these. This is, you know, for another class, it's for endocrine pharmacology for diabetes. But I'm letting you know that there are different ways of how a person would have hyperglycemia, all right? So there are different influences, pancreatic, GI influence, liver or hepatic influence, kidney or renal influence, and muscular uptake. And even the brain is involved in that. Now, if we know these principles of how the sugar goes up, then we also know how to medically manage them by inhibiting or agonizing these enzymes, right? So for example, the amylin mimetics, the glynides, the insulins, and sulfonylureas all act on the pancreas. They can either increase the insulin production like sulfonylureas or decrease the glucagon secretion by pancreas. On the other hand, the GLP-1 agonists and DPP-4 inhibitors act on the gut, right? So they decrease, I'm sorry, they increase the incretin right, to make you feel full so you don't want to eat. Incretin is your one of your enzymes or hormones that control your satiety. And when you don't eat, when you feel full, you don't want to eat, then the sugar will not increase because you're not going to eat. Or we can also use the alpha-glucosidase inhibitors, which will decrease the absorption of carbohydrates from your bloodstream in your intestines. And then you have metformin, which controls the liver from preventing glycogenolysis and G gluconeogenesis, as well as your SGLT2 inhibitors. Thiazolidinidiones or TZDs improve muscle uptake of sugar. It moves the sugar to the muscles, keep muscles using it to reduce the sugar. So what I'm saying is if we know how the sugar increases in the body, technically we also know how to medically treat it by using medicines or drugs, right? And going back to our mnemonic earlier for the oral medications, all right, we call this oral hypoglycemic agents. We have the DM bats, remember? And DPP4 inhibitors is widely being used here in the States now. <clears throat> we have the glyptins, citagliptin, linagliptin. One of the distinct features that we need to know about DPP4 is it can lead to pancreatic cancer. So that's one of the things we need to remember about them. And then we have meglitinides like repaglinide, one of the oldest diabetes medication. Biguanide, metformin is perhaps the most popular. And in fact, metformin is the primary medicine that we use to treat um, diabetes. Because when you use metformin, it can reduce the HbA1c to as much as 2%. All right, going back to what we talked about later, how do we diagnose diabetes again? What's the level of HbA1c where we say this is diabetes? If the HbA1c is greater than which amount? Is greater than which amount? Do you remember? Is greater than 6.5%. If it's more than 6.5%, that, that's diabetes. And metformin can reduce 
the um the HbA1c level by two percent. So if they're nine percent, we can bring them down to seven percent. The maximum dose for for metformin is about two thousand milligrams or two grams per day. And the most common complication with metformin is nausea and vomiting, but it can also cause eventually um, lactic acidosis, vitamin B12 deficiency because it pre prevents um, GI absorption of food and nutrients. So, um, but still the best medicine, right, for diabetes. And it's super easy to prescribe. It's cheap. It's the primary medicine recommended by American Diabetic Association. So that's what I write for my patients newly diagnosed with diabetes. Or even if they have pre-diabetes and they're already obese, I can start writing them for metformin. I'm a nurse practitioner, so I write med medical prescriptions as well to my patients under my care. And we have alpha-glucosidase inhibitors, acarbose. We rarely use it now, but it's still out there. Um, TZDs or glitazones. We rarely use it. It's cheap. It's easy to prescribe. But there's a complication with the glitazone, spioglitazone particularly, or rosiglitazone. They can cause congestive heart failure. So as prescribers, we want to be concerned with what are their heart function, if their heart is already um, cardiomegalic or has cardiomyopathy or has risk for CHF. We don't really use um, glitazones or TZDs. We have other medications that we can use, and they're better at preventing CHF. We do not want to use TZDs because of its complication, um, CHF. And then sulfonylurea is one of the oldest medicines for um, diabetes, right? Um, this will help reduce, I'm sorry, increase the insulin secretion from your pancreas. Let me just drink a little sip of water or coffee. My throat is drying up. Like I said, I have um, coughs and colds today, but I didn't want to miss this class, all right? I want to make sure that um, I'm able to attend this class for you guys. And I believe that this helps a lot of nurses. We've seen great success with Kinetics College in the past, and I surely do not want to miss this. That's why I re rested the whole day yesterday to be able to attend the class today. Anyway, sulfonylurea, the most popular is glipizide. The most common complication for sulfonylurea is hypoglycemia. If any of these medications on your screen um, will cause hypoglycemia, it's the sulfonylurea because they increase the insulin production of the pancreas. For this reason, it does not work for type 1 diabetes mellitus because they don't produce insulin. But be careful with sulfonylurea. They're cheap, they're easy to prescribe, but they also cause hypoglycemia. So make sure to tell patients to eat snacks 30 minutes to one hour after taking the medicine. And then one of the new medications we're using now here in the States are the SGLT2 or sodium glucose co-transporter co 2 enzyme inhibitors or the kind of glyphosin or empaglyphosin, right? And it's also very good at preventing weight gain. Most of your diabetes medications like sulfonylurea, insulin, Meglitinides, they can cause weight gain, but SGLT2 is one of those medications that can cause weight loss. And we know that obesity is usually a comorbidity for diabetes, right? And as SGLT2 can also cause pancreatitis. Another concern that we see here is patients usually complain of UTIs, fungal, ur uh, fungal urine tract infections, all right? So that's a problem. So that's the DM bats. Again, for the DM bats, What's the primary medicine that we use for diabetes? What's the number one medicine that we prescribe? Or we always start patients with diabetes with this medicine. What is that medication? Anyone? Anyone? Which in the screen is the primary medicine for diabetes? Can I see your answers in the comments? And we're going to have question and answer later. Very good, Diane. She said metformin. And Maria, Mariah said bigonide. Jane said metformin. Very good, Arlene. And here are the answers coming in right now. Yes, metformin is our priority medicine. And all of these are oral medications, right? And among the medications on your screen right now, which is the one that is more likely to cause 
hypoglycemia more likely to cause hypoglycemia anyone still waiting for the answers thank you guys for participating we're almost done with the lecture and we're going to go to the question and answers in a bit more likely to cause hypoglycemia are sulfonyl ureas very good glipizide glucophage is a brand name very good and among the medications on the screen which is more likely to cause congestive heart failure congestive heart failure congestive heart failure i mentioned that earlier congestive heart failure it's the tzds very good the thiazoli dimidiones it's such a long name we just use the name tzds very good all right going back to sulfonylureas you guys are correct all right a lot of people are participating right if you know that when they take this medication they can have hypoglycemia what nursing intervention or what health teaching do you tell your patient after taking the medicine after taking the sulfonylureas that can cause hypoglycemia what do you teach your client to prevent hypoglycemia what do you teach them anyone type your intervention on the screen on the comment section right now anyone tell them to what take snacks or eat within 30 minutes after taking the medicine because it can cause hypoglycemia very good and some patients are pretty good with monitoring their sugar so these are oral are oral medications and most common that you can encounter is metformin but then glipizide also comes out in the NCLEX as well as pioglitazone right and let's talk about <clears throat> the injectables the injectables are the most popular one is insulin but we have AGI amylinomimetic promlintidine or promlintide is it's um actually one of the um newer medicines but it's a little expensive so it's not usually commonly used um, in primary care or in patients being managed with diabetes um, pretty expensive we have glp1 receptor agonist it looks like a pen just like your insulin the pen um, insulin pen or glp1 pens we have duraglutide liraglutide exanatide i'm using the generic names um because that's what will, will come out in your NCLEX. And GLP-1 is also good with um, promoting weight loss for patients with obesity and diabetes. And in fact, we are using GLP-1 now for obesity management, regardless of diabetes. It's now FDA approved for obesity management. <clears throat> Quite an expensive medicine. If it's not covered by diabetes, I believe the medicine is about 1500 us dollars all right there's no generic forms yet because it's um you know it's uh what you call this um uh the medication is patented patented all right so they cannot we cannot use it for 30 years until the pay the um the license of the um manufacturers expire right so right now we're using the branded names right and it's pretty expensive a lot of insurance are covering it if you're outside the states your insurance might cover it all right and then of course we have insulin the rapid short intermediate and long acting insulin perhaps the most common and next question will be about the insulin all right and then of course those are your agis injectable medicine so we teach them how to use it it's usually coming in the form of pen we store it in the fridge and we take them out, put the needle in, and then we we we, te we tell them how to um, inject it to the tissues, all right, to the subcutaneous tissues. You can turn the tip, all right, the, the other end, the the turnstile, where you can choose how many units or milligrams you want to give, right? And usually GLP ones, it comes in a one month supply, very low dose. It's 0.5 to one, right? And these are the medications we use for obesity and diabetes because they promote weight loss. Metformin has a moderate weight loss effect. SGLT2 and DPP4s and GLP1 now are being used for obesity management because they promote weight loss. SGLT2, DPP4, and GLP. I forgot to put GLP. All right, please write it down. 
GLP can also promote weight loss. All right, GLP. All right. Are you guys familiar with these medicines? Anyone working in the medical floor, telemetry floor, or um, taking care of endocrine patients? Um, these are very common medicines if they're admitted to the hospital, all right? Depending on how bad their diabetes is, is we can give them um, dual or triple treatments, which means they can take two to three diabetes medication. They may be on metformin and GLP-1 and insulin, or they can be taking metformin and the dual DPP-4, SGLT-2-1, or DPP-4 and GLP-1. So different combinations. The goal is to lower the A1C level, all right? And what's our goal A1C level again? A1C should be lower than, lower than, A1C should be lower than what? To prevent diabetes, all right? It should be lower than 6.5. Actually, it should be lower than 5.7%, right? I know a lot of Filipinos, my folks here, we are at risk for diabetes. You should be taking your HbA1c test yearly, all right, to screen you for diabetes, especially if you have strong familial genetics of diabetes, even if you're not a Filipino. Both my parents' families have diabetes. My mom has diabetes. My dad has diabetes. And I took my genetic test and have strong risk for diabetes. So every year I take my A1c. I'm currently at 5.3 and 5.4, getting closer. But if you hit 5.7 to 6.4, you're pre-diabetic. You need to start diabetes, um, diet and exercise management. Um, very important to, <coughs> sorry about that, to do weight loss, all right? 6.5 is already considered diabetes in 2022, all right? Sorry about that, guys. My throat is um, drying up. Like I said, I have cough and congestion today, but I want to attend this class. I don't want to miss it, all right? So these are the medications used for obesity. And then we have insulin. Right, we have rapid acting as part and list pro. We have short acting, the other name for short acting is regular, which is humulin R, novolin R, humalog R. There's always R and novolog R. And then the intermediate, we know this as NPH, it's the only cloudy in insulin out there. And the long acting, we have glargine. Write that, this down in your notes. The Glargine is the most common, the Lantus. I'm not writing today. I usually write on my lectures when I do my lectures with my students in Aspire RN. And I do pharmacology class for eight hours. So it's two days of four hours each. Today is only one hour to give you an overview of what it is like of how I do my classes. And of course, to help you guys with your equics if you're going to take it soon. But uh Glargynus lantus, it's one of the most common NCLEX question. Write it down, lantus. You have to remember it comes in a pen, all right? Just like what we talked about earlier, and it's usually clear. And you know what I like with Glargyne? It does not have a peak effect, all right? The lantus, it does not have peak effects, so therefore there's no need to worry about hypoglycemia. Your concern is... In the peak effect, like rapid acting peaks at one hour, short acting peaks at two hours, intermediate acting peaks between four to 12 hours. Some of them can peak within 16 hours, right? There can be a hypoglycemic reaction. I'm sorry, I need to clear my throat. There can be a hypoglycemic reaction during the peak effect. So for example, after you give short acting hypo um, insulin, I'm sorry, for example, regular insulin, and after two hours, the patient started feeling tachycardic, pale, diaphoretic, weak, jittery. That's a sign of hypoglycemia. You tell them to eat something, drink cola or soda for simple sugars or eat um, something to increase the sugar like candies, right? Or uh, glucagon pills to prevent hypoglycemia. So when giving insulin, you have to teach them about the duration, the onset, and the peak, particularly the peak effect, because that's when the hypoglycemia reaction happens, all right? And I don't want you to memorize this. Just familiarize yourself with the table. This is not definite. It's just an estimate or approximate, right? But again, what I like about Glargang, the long-acting Lantus, is it does not have a peak effect, which means there's no risk for hypoglycemia, all right? And um, again, which type of insulin does not have 
a peak effect or does not cause hypoglycemia? Let me see your answers. Anyone? We're about to wrap up. Which one does not cause peak effect? It's or does not have a peak effect and does not cause hypoglycemia. It's Glargine. The brand name is Lantus. L-A-N-T-U-S. L-A-N-T-U-S. Right? Thank you. I'm starting to get very congested already. But thank you guys for bearing with me. And we usually have mixed or pre-mixed insulin like regular and NPH. We can also mix it. All right? Um, if we have to. But we rarely mix it now because it's already... Um, pre-mixed from the vial, okay? And of course, the, the fast-acting one is rapid. Be careful because it can have an onset of 15 to 30 minutes and peak in one hour. So it works really fast, okay? So they can have hypoglycemic reaction within one hour. Be very careful, right? Now, things you need to remember with insulin. I will use the mnemonic insulin, okay? I-N-S-U-L-I-N. Letter I, when giving insulin, you need to inject it at room temperature. Cold temperature can cause pain. It can also cause lipodystrophy. Inject at room temperature. Do not inject it cold. Letter N, never massage or apply heat. Never massage or apply heat. Why? Because it can increase the absorption rate. That's why you're putting it sub-Q for slow release. If you massage the area after a sub-Q injection then it will increase the absorption and can cause hypoglycemia. Never massage or apply heat. Letter S, we give it sub-Q. When you give sub-Q, you use a subcutaneous needle. And how long is the subcutaneous needle? It's usually 5 eighth of an inch, 5 over 8. It's short. You do not use the 1 inch needles. You can also use half inch, 1 over 2, or 5 over 8. Right? Short needles. If you've seen it, the insulin syringes, they're short. And you can do 90 degrees towards the subcutaneous area. Sub-Q, sub-Q, even the back has sub-Q fats, right? Or fatty layers. <clears throat> and the only insulin that can be given through IV is regular insulin. Again, what's the only insulin that can be given through IV? What's the only insulin that can be given through IV? That is... Regular insulin, very good. I have to mute my mic every now and then to clear my throat. I don't think you guys want to hear that. But the others are sub-Q, whether it's Lantus or NPH or Rapid like Lispro. You do not want to give them um, regular or IV because they're not stable to be given IV. It's sub-Q, right? Regular can be given both sub-Q and IV, right? Now, letter U, remember units. When using an insulin syringe... You have to remember the syringe should have units, all right? Remember when, if you're working as a nurse, you already know this. The insulin syringe and the tuberculin syringe looks the same. Same size, same length, all right? And there are so many nurses that have mistakenly used tuberculin syringe versus the insulin syringe. That's why here in the States, insulin syringe is part of the national safety goal of the JCO or JCI, Joint Commission, all right? We now need to do double nurse or two nurse verification. When giving insulin, how many nurses need to verify that? Two nurses to prevent medication error because there's so much medication errors in insulin here in the United States. And I've seen quite a few nurses have um, errors with this, even with two nurse verification. I mean, I work in the ER. We inject regular insulin all the time through IV. It's, our, it's one of our emergency medication, right? So two nurses need to verify why. The most common error stems from using the syringe, right? When you use insulin syringe, you have to remember it has to have units, right? The tuberculin syringe has what? ML, milliliters, right? It's 0 0.1, 0 0.2 until 1.0 ml. Units, the insulin syringe would have 5, 10, 15, 20, up to 100 units. 100 units, 1 ml, they're the same, all right? Same size, same length. The difference 
is in the unit of measurement, all right? Again, insulin syringe. What do we see in the insulin syringe to make sure it's the insulin syringe, all right? Is it units or ml? Units or ml? All right, units or ml. Let me just reply to this important message before we finish this. All right. All right, very good, units. And then of course, L, lipodystrophy risk, which means it can lead to like, um, you know, the fats become hard and scarred, right? It will prevent absorption of insulin. So to prevent lipodystrophy, which is a major complication of insulin, um, please uh, make sure to rotate the sites, all right? Rotate the sites. So we usually have charts telling them, do not use the same site, rotate it, go to the left, go to the right, go to the back part of the triceps and to the back part in the scapula those are fatty areas and need to monitor hypoglycemia can you guys give me some symptoms of hypoglycemia before i proceed to the next slide i think the next slide will be the questions all right can you guys give me symptoms some symptoms of hypoglycemia anyone anyone It's tachycardia. What else? Jittery or shaking, sweating, diaphoresis. What else? Dizziness, weakness, pallor, irritability, right? Fainting, all right? Those are the different signs of hypoglycemia. And what's your management? I'm sorry about that. What's your management for hypoglycemia? I already t told you some forms of management earlier. We give them what? Simple sugars. Example, Coke or soda. What else? Orange juice, glucagon pills, candies, fruits. Usually it's soda because it's easier to drink, right? We need to give them simple sugars, right? Now, are you ready for questions? All right, simple sugars, okay? Are you ready for questions? All right, question number one. Record your answers, okay? This is a select all that apply question. <clears throat> all right? When preparing to treat a patient with diabetes mellitus, the nurse knows that which of the following medications can be given IV, select all that apply. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'm waiting for your answers, guys. And uh, remember, it's a select all that apply. Answer, record your answers, okay? What's your answer? The answer is B and E. Humulin R is a brand name for regular insulin and regular insulin who got this correctly okay if you've answered b and e you get two points right if you're taking your nclex before the next gen which is before april 1 2023 and you answered only b or only e you get one point right you get one point but if you're taking the next gen nclex select all that apply is correct minus incorrect right or Correct, minus incorrect. So if you've answered one, either B or E, then your score is zero because your correct is one, your incorrect is one, then your score is zero, all right? So that's a problem with next-gen NCLEX. Select all that apply is already hard, but the scoring system make it, make it, makes it more complicated. So your score is zero because it's correct minus incorrect answers, all right? So zero, right? That's the new generation Netflix for you. Next question. 
So either your score is two or zero because it's only two correct answers. The following medications may be used for the treatment of obesity in patients with diabetes mellitus. You guys are still with me? Yep, it's very hard. We're about to wrap up right now. Three more questions or two more questions. Answer. Answer. Mm -hmm. Answer is, it's actually one, two, three, four. All right. One, two, three, four. My slide is incorrect. One, two, three, four. All right. Listen. To those who got one, two, three, four, you get four points. If you've only answered three correct answers, you get two points. If you've gotten two answers, you get one point. If you've only had one correct answer, your score is zero. All right, it's correct minus incorrect answer. I'm using the next generation um, scoring system. I'm just training you guys. If you're taking your next gen NCLEX next year, scoring system will really, really be different and very difficult, all right? Well, lucky you if you're going to take your NCLEX before April 1, all right? But if you're taking your NCLEX next year after April 1, well, your score will be affected, right? So if your answer is 1, 2, 3, 4, you get 4 points. Otherwise, your, your answer should be correct minus incorrect, right? So if you get 3, then you get 2 points. If you get 2, then you get 1 point. If you get 1 correct answer only, then your score is 0, all right? Next. Which of the following are correct statements about insulin management? Select all that apply. Answer. Answer is very good. This is an easy question. I just did this question last night. I write my own questions, guys. I like writing my own questions. And before I used to like do a lot of multiple choice, but I think it's easier for a lot of people. So now all my questions are select all that apply. I love select all that apply. I know that's your favorite type of questions too, right? Answers one and two. If you've only answered one correct answer, your score is zero. So your score is either two or zero, okay? I'm sorry. That's just how it is, right? And here is my last question. Now listen. My last question is an NCLEX next generation style, right? If you want to know more about next generation NCLEX, join my show at the Dr. Nurse Paul Show on my social media account, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. I live stream my Dr. Nurse Paul show every Saturday. I'm going to talk to you about that in a bit. But listen to the instructions, all right? This is like select all that apply, but you're going to do it per column, right? So let's read the instruction. For each of the medication consideration below, click to specify if the statement is consistent with the medication in each column. Each statement may support more than one medication. So I'm only one of the few NCLEX instructors for foreign graduate nurses that do NCLEX next generation styles because a lot of nurses that are teaching foreign grads are not trained here in the U.S. I am trained here in the U.S. I'm a certified educator here as well, as well as a certified family nurse practitioner. I can do next gen and clicks. And if you really are interested, join my classes and I'll teach you how to answer this. If you think you're going to take your NCLEX next year, I will be helping you pass your NCLEX even with the next generation NCLEX. You want to know more about it? Join my show, watch my previous shows about next gen NCLEX, right? But you're going to do one column at a time. And this is going to be correct versus incorrect answer because it's like select all that apply, but we're going to do it column. We call it matrix or table. So this is a multiple response matrix. 
or matrix, select all that apply. All right, each statement may support more than one medication. You're gonna do it by column, all right, by column. Let's do regular first. Your options are one, clear color, two, maybe mixed, three, monitor for hypoglycemia, four, maybe given IV, and five, no peak effect. What are your answers? Let's do regular first. We're going to do by column, okay? We're going to do by column. By column, we're going to do regular first. Regular, is it clear? Yes. Can it be mixed with other insulin? Yes. Do we need to monitor for hypoglycemia? Yes. And can we give it IV? Yes. And is there no peak effect? No. So the answer is one, two, three, and four. Very good. Right minus wrong, okay? Right minus wrong. Correct versus incorrect. So the answer is either four points. And then if your answer is only two or three, then you get deduction, all right? You see, NCLEX generation is now very complicated. Let's now go to NPH. NPH. Let's go to NPH now. <clears throat> is it clear colored? Can it be mixed? Do we need to monitor for hypoglycemia? Can it be given IV? No peak effect? What's your answer? Two answers only, all right? If you have more than two answers, then your score would be one or zero. It's right minus wrong, all right? Compute your scores per column. So in regular, how many points did you get? It's right minus wrong, okay? Right minus wrong. So if you got three correct answer and two incorrect, that's one point. If you got three incorrect answers and three incorrect, that's zero. For NPH, the answers are only two. So if you get one correct answer only, your score is zero. So it's two or zero. Right? Now, Lantus. Lantus. What's the answer? Clear colored? Maybe mixed? Monitor for hypoglycemia? Given IV, no peak effect, answer, clear colored, it cannot be mixed, there is no need for hypoglycemia, there is no need to give IV, no peak effect, that's the answer. Only two answers, the first and the last, all right? Now options one and five. <clears throat> if you've answered one and four, then your score is zero. If you've answered one and four, that's zero. One, three, and five, that's zero. One, two, three, and five, your score is zero. Two, three, and five, your score is zero. All right? Now compute your scores. Regular plus NPH plus Lantus. Your total score should be four, five, six, seven, eight points. Remember, it's right minus correct. If in regular, you've only answered two, then that's zero. All right? What's your score? Anyone? This is an easy question. It's a recall type of question. Only six, all right? Some people got zero points. Some people got one point. I, I can see your answers, guys. I can see your answers, all right? But be, be very careful. So here's my question to you. Is NCLEX next generation questions or NGN easy or difficult? <clears throat> I always keep getting this question. Do you think, sir, it's going to be easier or is it going to be more difficult? What's the answer? For me, it's more difficult, right? Because it's not only with the way it's being asked, but it's also the scoring system that makes it very complicated, all right? Anyone here will be taking their NCLEX after April 1 next year? And this is only this is only one of the 14 types of questions. Before, there's only six types of questions. Now there's 14. And mind you, this question that I used, I write, I wrote this question last night. Like I said, I write my own question. I'm a trained um, item writer, and I'm a trained next-gen NCLEX provider as well. So <clears throat> if you guys think that you're going to take your NCLEX next year after April 1, 2023, partner with me. I'm going to help you pass the exam. I'll make sure that you will pass your exam through my program, Aspire RN. Or you can also... Visit the link below if you want scholarship opportunity with Kinetics USA and Aspire RN Partnership. We're offering NCLEX opportunity 
um, scholarship opportunity where we connect you to recruiters that will sponsor you and pay for your NCLEX review program and employment here in the United States. You do not have to worry about anything. The link is below, cusa.link slash AspireRN. You're going to get scholarship. If you qualify, we have set criteria. The recruiters will contact you, but please do click this link or send me a message in my social media, Dr. Nurse Paul. I'll help you get connected with our recruiters as well. All right. This question that I flashed on the screen is actually easy. This is easy. I have more difficult questions. If you think you got eight over eight here, it's because I chose an easy question. All right. When you attend my classes, I do sample case questions in my Secrets of Next Generation NCLEX. You'll see how hard it is going to be. All right. Aside from the scoring system, the questions itself are confusing. There's highlighting, matrices. Um, select all that apply, select N, there's rational uh, scoring, rational testing. How long does it take to be approved for New York board? I'm not sure. I think it takes about six to eight months. When is the best time to review? Forget if May is the target day. Well, you need to start now. Comprehension building is key, depending on how fast you study. One to two months is good enough to build your comprehension. And the next three months, two to three months, you use to like improve your test taking skills or test drills, all right? If you want to know more about how to prepare for the NFX, I can help you send me a an, an, uh, question at the Dr. Nurse Paul in my social media, all right? Please join my show. Aside from Kinetics USA, I also do live shows every Saturday, 8 a.m. If you have questions about the Kinetics USA program, I can connect you to the recruiters as well. If you're already a nurse that needs a recruiter, I can connect it to my recruiter as well in Kinetics USA. I'm teaming up with Kinetics USA to help nurses fulfill their American dream, all right? And if you're having a hard time passing the NCLEX, I know the passing rate for foreign graduates is only less than 50%, more than more than 50% of the people taking the NCLEX, and that's about hundreds of thousands of people every year, fail the exam. If you failed your NCLEX before and you want another chance to pass the NCLEX to get you here to the United States like many of us, contact me in my social media, Dr. Nurse Paul. I will help you through our Aspire RN program, all right? And we have different programs that we offer. Just contact me and I'll explain that to you. But if you're about to take your NCLEX soon and you want a short course program, I have a 10-day review for a program. We call it NCLEX it and Final Coaching. And you can join this as well. This is only if you're taking your exam soon. But if you have two to three months to spare, just join my full program because you can take advantage of my live classes, personal mentorships, and sure pass guarantee and so many others. All right. Some of our programs have UWorld 90-day access as well. And do you have a promo? Yes, I do have a promo. Message me. I can give you a 20% discount if you use my promo code in the Aspire RN website. And, uh, um, and yes, I can help you with next generation NCLEX. It's, is this a system by system review? Correct. All right. This is a system by system review. We're going to talk about all the things that you know, need to know to the, for the NCLEX RN preparation step by step. All right. If this cost is too expensive for you, because again, NCLEX uh, review programs are expensive, plus I do personal mentorships. That's why it's a little uh, on the higher end. And I'm only one of the few um, review programs, NCLEX prep courses that um, do personal mentorships. Please join the NCLEX scholarship opportunity provided by Kinetics USA and Aspire RN. We're going to flash the link one more time here. It's cusa.link slash aspire rn to join the nclex scholarship opportunity we have also put this in the comments section to join the nclex scholarship opportunity type cusa.link slash aspire rn or message me in my social media dr nurse paul or join my show the dr nurse paul show if you join my show on november um, I think 15, um, check my schedule on my social media. I will give out one free NCLEX review. I usually do giveaways where viewers can join the raffle and I pick one winner after the show, all right? Please message me or check my Facebook page for announcements. But thank you for joining this class. If there's any part of this class that you did not understand, Put it in the comments and I will try to respond within the next 24 hours. Thank you guys for joining. 
please tune in Kinetics College every Monday, hosted by Kinetics USA in their um, social media pages. It's every Monday, 5 a.m. Pacific Time or 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, all right? And uh, we also we have Diane here. Thank you, Diane. She's an October passer. She joined our HIT final coaching class. Thank you, Diane, for joining us. I will be in contact with you. I want to interview you for my The Doctor Nurse Paul show. And we, we've been already texting. But thank you so much for trusting Aspire RN. Thank you guys for joining this class. If you want to know more about the programs that I do, I've done so much free live classes on my website, on my Facebook page. On Kinetics USA, you can see my face there because I usually partner with Kinetics USA. We'll be launching a show soon about next generation Netflix teaming up with Kinetics USA. Watch out for the announcement. Otherwise, you can also watch my The Doctor Nurse Paul show. Thank you guys for joining. This show is recorded. Please tag your friends. They can watch the show later. If you have questions, send me a message on my Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, or you can also send a message to Kinetics USA and they will connect you to me. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you for joining the show. See you soon. Bye.